Hi, it's Arlie. I'm going to be doing, I'm going to do a, a short video. I think it's going to be short um, with another one of my little shower thoughts. And it's going to include tomatoes, the serenity prayer, and William Shatner. Stay tuned. Okay. One of the reasons that I don't like my own art is that I'm comparing myself with others or comparing, sorry, comparing my art with the art of others. And one of my goals over the last couple of years was to try to figure out what my style is. I've been thinking about it and reading about it and talking to friends about it. And so that's what I want to talk about today is style. At first, I thought style, my own style, my Arlie style, is something that I would work toward and acquire. And it's something that like, once you get it, then you have it sort of like, um, I don't know, knitting a sweater, you would, you would decide what you want, what you want, and then you would work toward it, and then you'd be done. And you never have to work on it, on it again. But what I've discovered and my friends will tell you this because I've, I've shared it with a couple of my friends who are on the same journey, is that your style is already there and there's nothing you can do about it. Just like your voice. I'm, and what I mean by that is like, you know, if you, if you answer the phone and it's your mom on the other line, on the end of the line, you know, on the phone, you recognize her voice. She could be whispering, she could be screaming or talking normally. She could be talking very quickly, excited about something. She could be just woken up and talking really slowly. She could have a cold. My point is that with all these different sort of flavors, your voice is still your voice. The actual word is timbre, T-I-M-B-R-E. Somehow, I never took any music classes, but somehow I remember this as being a musical term. It's basically how you can tell the difference between a saxophone and a trumpet and a trombone. It's the sound that you can't get away from. So you can play all the notes. You can play it, you know, quickly and slowly and raspy, you know, whatever, but it still is what it is. And that's style. So I'm going to go through my notes. I did actually take notes because it's a, it's a little, it's kind of a confusing to me. It's confusing for me to put all this together into one because I've been thinking about it for a long time. And it was the other day that I finally had the, the, the one idea that sort of coalesced everything. A little bit of a sidetrack, which if you've watched any of my videos, you know I do this, but I'll come back and it relates. I have uh, family members in 12-step programs and one of the things that I picked up from 12-step programs, like so that would be more than 40 years ago, was the serenity prayer. And I looked it up recently, and the serenity prayer has been around for more than a hundred years. But the first person to actually sort of formalize it was a man named Reinhold Niebuhr, Niebuhr, N-I-E-B-U-H-R, in the 40s in a sermon. And the serenity prayer is, I don't know how it starts because it's been written so many different ways. Lord, help me to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. There are longer and different versions of this quote, but that's the one that sort of, it's actually literally was turned into a Hallmark card, and then it was picked up by the AA groups. Now it goes through all the 12 step groups and it's pretty well known, but it, it started as a saying the saying was more simple and it was the serenity to accept what cannot be helped. And um, that was first written down 
in the 30s by June Purcell Guild. I'm just telling you this because you might be kind of a nerd like me and you might want to look it up. Through my life, since I learned that, I've used the serenity prayer over and over and over because it really helps me pick out when I'm being really stressed about something, if it's something worth being stressed out about. I think style is something that I can let go of. The things, so I sort of wrote this down in a confusing way. Let me see if I can follow my train of thought. The things I cannot change are, and I need the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, would be my recognizable voice, which today it's a little bit sort of shaky, and I, I think it's because I was coughing earlier today, but you still know it's my voice because it has, it sounds like me. And the other thing that I cannot change is um, what I know so far, what I've learned so far. I've, I, I mean, I guess I could develop amnesia or something, but in terms of my style, it's everything up until this point, everything that has happened to me and everything I've learned and everything I've done. And then right now it would be my limits, my limitations. I'm not going to do a um, plein air painting from a hot air balloon. You know, <laughs> that's just an example off the top of my head, but you know, I have limitations and I can change some of them, but there are some limitations I cannot change. And I can't change the past. And like I said, I guess I could get amnesia. So, but let's, let's not talk about that that way. So I was writing these notes and I turned the TV on and it was free TV, so I couldn't pause it, but it was a Columbo episode, Columbo the TV detective. And William Shatner was the, the murderer and he put a ski mask on and murdered. He put a ski mask on and sunglasses to disguise himself. And then he went to somebody who knew him and was whispering. And I thought, oh, I, I, t I totally can recognize his voice because, you know, it's William Shatner. Of course, in the show, she didn't recognize him until he spoke with his regular voice. But it's, it reminded me how I mean, he has his style, his voice. I need to think of my painting style like William Shatner's voice, if that makes any sense. It makes sense to me. The next part is the courage to change the things I can. That would be, and if it was in speech, if, if we're just talking about speech, you know, you think about maybe voice actors. There are some voice actors who can mimic others, but then when they relax, they go back to their own voice. But the things I can change are the language that I'm speaking in, the speed at which I speak, the content, what, what I talk about, certain flavor like swearing or whether I, there's one of the, um, we watch uh, the Oak Island, what's it called? And one of the brothers uses long words or, or weird words. And you can tell he's a, the kind of person who reads a lot. It bugs my husband, but I love it. So whether you could be wordy or you could use slang, you can whisper, you can yell, you could do voice exercises, which I probably should have done before talking today. You might have an accent or you might have had an accent when you were young that kind of went away, but your voice still sounds like you. My mom is Australian. She's lived in the US, let's see, 75 years. She still has a little bit of an accent and you can tell she's from somewhere, but you can't quite tell that it's Australian. But I'm sure when she first moved to, actually she moved to Canada when she was a teenager, she probably had a very strong accent, but it still sounded like her with or without the accent. So I guess if you think about voices compared to painting style or art style, it, there, there still is an integral, the, there's the voice that you would recognize. And then there's the different things you can put on the voice. So that would be accent. Those are the things I can change or that might change. I could try on different voices, which and I haven't really done it very much on recording, but my family will tell you I can get pretty goofy. And, 
And um, the other thing is when you, I don't do this, but when you talk to people or your puppies or whatever, you're like, did you do it? you talk baby talk or I have a friend who used to do, she ran a place that did facials and she talked very softly when she did her facials. But then out in the world, she talked normally. The courage to change what I can is to try new things, to push my comfort zone and to sort of try different things on and also to be willing to have little things change, such as my comparison of my, my mom's accent changing to be okay with it and not hold on to things that are changing on their own. The third part, the wisdom to know the difference between what I can and cannot change. This is a little more nuanced when it comes to art. I think I might be too sensitive and I need exposure. And what I mean by that, I used to not like the sound of my own voice. And I worked, well, I, I volunteered at a radio station and I was given the opportunity to record a regular daily announcement thing. And I realized that when I turned the um, volume down in the headphones, I had a hard time understanding, or I had a hard time getting a feel for my own voice. But when I turned my voice up actually pretty high, similar, I, I don't, if you're old enough, you remember what a phone sounds like, the handheld old timey phone. When you used to talk in those phones, you would hear your own voice in your ear because I don't know how how they did it, but you would hear your own voice. And so when you're in a recording studio and you turn your headphones up until you can kind of hear yourself, I started to become okay with my own voice. And then also when I, I long time ago in another life, I used to be a personal trainer. And I became really accustomed to looking at myself in the mirror and being very accepting, accepting of myself. It sounded like I said accepting, but I mean accepting. It's possible that I'm just ultra sensitive because of the newness of something. I like trying out a new, like when I first was painting in watercolor, it felt very awkward. And the more I do it, the less I really sort of care and maybe that's what I need is just to expose myself to it and sort of get burned out on it, like an inoculation kind of. I'm still talking about the wisdom to know the difference between what I can and cannot change. Um, I need to look at the difference between forcing something and adjusting to something. I need clear attainable goals, which could be good in any part of your life, just like a New Year's resolution be a better person, that doesn't make sense. But if I said I'm going to um, write thank you cards um, every time I get a gift, that would be a clear goal, which I never write thank you cards, <laughs> but you get my point. I want to become better at self-critique. And if you've been watching my other videos, you know that I, I realize that I've I've realized that I have these sort of like um, tapes that play in my head. You can't do that. You shouldn't do that. You did that wrong. And I've given them actual cartoon faces. And I, as soon as I finish this sketchbook, I probably have another week to go. I'll do a flip through of a finished sketchbook using those, well, five of those like voices in my head, ranging from mean to nice. And I think um, self-critique is something I really, really can work on. And that's where I can find the wisdom to know the difference between what I can change and what I can't change. So sort of kind of wrapping it up, the style sheet was the idea that I had the other day that I realized was kind of like the last point that makes this all make sense to me. In a style sheet. Okay, so back up a little bit. Out of college, I worked for newspapers and I was a typesetter. And one of the newspapers, uh, one of the publishing companies had, I think, five different publications and each one had their own style sheet. And what that means is um, things like, I'll type it out on the screen so you can see what I mean. Do you say 10 a.m. like 
one zero lowercase am, all one word? Or do you say one zero colon zero zero space capital A capital M? And stuff like that. So it's not that the actual, it's not that the content has changed or the meaning has changed. It's just that each publication says, this is how, it, as long as you're inside this publication, you do it this way. You always capitalize county, uh, for example. I, I can't think of other things, but it's a style sheet. And I think for me, that's what's missing. I feel sort of lost and floaty because I don't know what my style is. And I think what I need to do maybe during my critiques or just sort of, you know, sit down with a cup of coffee and flip through my stuff and see if I do have some things I can nail down. It doesn't mean that it's a rule. A style sheet just is a guide so that, you know, um, I don't know, you go to a restaurant and you order that thing that you love that they make. If they follow a different recipe every single time, then you're going to stop going there. You're, you're going to stop ordering that. So, you know, it's I, I want to see if I can figure out what are the things that I like about my work and create sort of a style sheet, maybe not even written down, just an observation. And then I told you in my little intro, I was going to say tomatoes. Well, my mom, being Australian, taught me Australian pronunciation of certain words, even though I was born in the U.S. So I say tomato and vase and envelope and, you know, a few other words. And I have tried to say tomato and it does not sound right to me. I cannot, I can, obviously, you heard me say it just now. It feels so wrong to say it. And I have some friends who said that when they hear me say tomato, it sounds like I'm faking being posh, <laughs> which is kind of funny. I just, even so, I can't, even, even though they've said that and I live in America, I still can't make my mouth say tom tomatoes when I mean tomatoes. So my son, He's 21 and he kind of goes back and forth. He says tomato, but when he's talking to me, he says tomato, but that's not my point. My point is that's one of those things that I have to get onto my style sheet. You know, if I, if I were doing a style sheet for my speaking, it would be, I would have to say, I will always pronounce tomatoes this way. And I'm, I can, I can change it, but I don't want to. So it's on my style sheet. Let's see what else. So in art, I was thinking, for example, some something that I love to do, and it feels like I kind of have to do it, is I always have a black pen or a black colored pencil and a white colored pencil. And I can't find a white pen that I like, but I always like to, well, not always, most of the time I like to go in with my black and white and add the tiniest little detail. And for me, it feels like I like the cherry on top, like it's the little thing that it needs. And so I guess that would be something that's on my style sheet. I don't have to do it every time, but it's, it's uh, if you look through my stuff, you'll see it. Um, I can tell you a couple of other things if you wanna flip through my Instagram. One thing is unconscious is that I always have a, um, not always, I won't say always, but you see what I'm trying to say My on my style sheet. I look for zigzags. I, I tend to have a zigzag. So my compositions will have a diagonal line or a Z composition or W or an X. So I think that's why I'm drawn to sort of streets and alleys and pathways because they have that sort of perspective X shape. And um, if I were doing abstract, I suppose that's one thing that I could remember from my figurative painting and bring it into abstract that I really do like those diagonals. So let's see, did I say everything? Yeah, I think that's it. I think that, that covers it. So I hope you don't mind. I didn't really have anything to show you. And I, so I just decided to put this audio over my painting something and um, 
I ha I've had to adjust the speed of the painting to match the um, this audio that should be about 20 minutes long. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.